in double replacement reactions, there are three subtypes we see. We've already seen the precipitation. That's when there's a color change because there was a solid and insoluble product formed. And there's also gas forming and neutralization. So let's look at each of these. So the solid product is determined from using the solubility rules and you find that one of the products or maybe both, uh, but at least one is insoluble. And so this is upon mixing two clear solutions, this is, uh, you can see double the vol volume. And what you have here is a white, this white cloudiness. So solid, remember, doesn't mean it's this big piece of uh, solid. It actually just means it's enough of a solid so you can see it and it typically manifests as a color change. And so this will eventually fall to the bottom, so it's called a precipitate. Now you can start with two clear solutions, or in this example, there's a kind of yellowish clear solution and a clear solution. And mixing them together, you end up with this brown cloudiness. That brown cloudiness is a color change, which is evidence of a chemical reaction. And when there's a color change, it's typically because there's an insoluble product. So this would be a precipitate that eventually would fall to the bottom of this test tube. Now for a double replacement reaction that has a gas that's formed, this is an example of a clear solution and a white solid. Mixing them together, you can see these bubbles at the, at the top of this test tube. So that is, uh, bubbles are indicating a gas, just like with a single replacement. What happened this time, though, was in double replacement, you have the ion switching places. And uh, this is uh, an example we'll see in lab. And liquid water, so this is the neutralization reaction. This is when you have a double replacement, the ions are switching places. In neutralization, it's usually the two reactants are an acid and a base. So these are clear solutions in these two test tubes down here. And the temperature, the, there's thermometers in each of them to show the temperature is about 25 degrees for both solutions. So neither of them have colors, so they're both clear solutions. When you mix them together, you get double the volume, and you still have a clear solution. So it appears that there's no change. That's because you cannot see water. Water doesn't have any color. It's not any bubbles. It um, does. It is marked, though, by a temperature change. So you can see where, whereas the two reactants started off 25 degrees Celsius, the end product is 30 degrees Celsius. So this is a temperature increase, and the, this is how you can detect a neutralization. The formation of water as a product is from a temperature change, and it's usually going to be heating up. In double replacement reactions, no reaction is possible. This is because ions can switch places and products can be formed, and you can write the chemical, uh, chemical formulas for products, but if not, neither of the products um, contains either a precipitate, this is an insoluble product, or a gas, or water, then this is going to be no reaction because everything is an aqueous ion. So here's what it looks like. In comparison to a precipitate reaction where you had a white cloudiness that would fall to the bottom, no reaction looks like cl clear solutions before and it's still a clear solution afterwards and it um, would not feel a temperature change. You would not be able to detect it. And so that is no reaction because all of the ions or all of the products are aqueous ions. And so they are not, there are no permanent bonds that form to precipitate gas or water.